Hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to my IELTS writing tips lesson today. Can you hear my sound and see me? Can you please confirm? Hello Mob, Groot, Bassam, Stranger, Fatima, Desire. Thank you very much for joining. Can you please confirm once again if you can hear my sound and see the video? Okay, baby said yes, but some hello, Manas, welcome, Groot, welcome, Yogesh, Tanisha, R. H. Russell, Wayam, Basam, thank you very much. Manas again, uh, I'm visual, that's cool. Thank you very much for the confirmation. Today I'm going to give you some tips if you're sitting for the IELTS exam or any type of academic exam, you know, the academic exams, like if you're starting in school or college or university or masters or starting to plan a PhD program or research program, you need to know your writing skill, the capacity. You know, it is important for you to get good marks in your all these exams because our target is to get good marks and pass it then after finishing our in you know, a student life go to academy in you know, a professional life some students some people choose to be uh, build up the career in academic like that teaching all right so it is important uh marb you can't join my live stream because you are not my student because i'm a teacher maybe you're new you don't know how to and you know join in a teacher's live stream if you ever see this button called hop on and if you click to it if it says you need to subscribe to the course that person is a teacher so it is an important matter for you the people who don't know how to join a teacher once again you need to subscribe to the teacher either a paid course or a free course this is how we can join a teacher uh salam marb i'm from england R. H. Russell says, I'm learning. I will sit for IELTS on the 25th. Oh, that's cool, Shaikul. So it, this lesson would be much helpful for you. Hi, Tutu, welcome. Pradeep, welcome, stranger. What's that cute? It's a boy, it's not a girl. Okay, it's my, our son. Uh, it, when he was a child, he does his three years old photo. So once again, guys, thank you very much for joining. People who do not know about me, people who are new, welcome everyone. Uh, I'm going to remove the photo. Give me one quick second. I'll be back in a moment. Sorry, guys, I'm coming back in three seconds. Okay, I'm back here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Abu Bakr, you have sent me a request because you would like to join, but you're not able to join. One second, the reason is that when a teacher makes a live stream, if you'd like to join the teacher, you need to subscribe either to a paid course or a free course. From the hello, I'm offering three courses free. One is English grammar, second one is spoken english the third one is IELTS speaking okay uh jaybird janaba welcome pradeep yeah this is my youtube channel i'm going to upload lessons from next month hello ck welcome uh well, i'm so this is my first time to join here okay welcome again uh, yusuf welcome i'm doing great mahfuz alaikum salam Aisha, welcome. Jubair, welcome. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining. 
we're going to kick off our lesson when we reach to 50 viewers. Faryal walaikum salam, because welcome. Once again, everyone, I'm doing great. Thank you very much. So people who are new, once again, for them, my mini interaction, though you can visit my account by teaching on my name, it will redirect you there to find out about me. Okay, I'm Rahat Ali, a part-time TEFL certified English teacher from the UK, but I was not born here. As you can see, I'm not white. I'm not English. But uh, I migrated here in 2004, 17 years ago. I was born in Bangladesh, so my first degrees were from there. English is my second language, okay? And I came here from Saudi Arabia because I went to work in Saudi Arabia as a pharmacist. I'm an industrial pharmacist from Bangladesh. So I worked a couple of years before I left for Saudi Arabia. So I had to learn Arabic language to practice as a pharmacist. So I learned Arabic language you know, in 90 days. That is the amazing matter, in three months. Okay, and basically in 2004, I got the job offer from the National Health Service UK government. And I just came here and since the time I've been living here. So after coming here, obviously, uh, it was my desire to build my career in my professional life. So I had to go back for studies. So I completed my postgraduate diploma from the University of Manchester. Then I came back to work again. And I worked for the British Armed Forces as a civilian captain from the Medical Corps. And I was posted in Germany and the Falkland Islands. And I stayed in Germany one year. And this is how I learned basic German language. And obviously, you know, after that, I came back and I went back to studies again. Then I completed my MBA in public health, which is only last year. And I applied for my PhD program and I've been accepted. Now I'm waiting for it, maybe next year. I'm not sure when it's going to start. And as I said, Hello has an offer for all the students, all the verified users, you can join any teacher's live stream through paid course, number one, or free course, or trial course. So I have offered three courses once again, grammar, English grammar, that's my course, I have designed it, spoken English, that is, I have designed too, and IELTS, that has been designed by the Hello curriculum. Okay, guys, that's all about me. And you can see that the father, I've got a son, he's big boy now. And I live in Essex of England, which is next to East London border. Okay, so let me read out some of the comments. Stranger, I have explained to you. If you would like to join my courses, go to the Discover page. You know, that is home page with a photo of your home. Next to is Discover page. I'm going to show you guys how you can join. Um, Let me share the screen so that you understand how you can join. Oh, not this one. Can you see the home page, guys? Uh, Russell says, I'm learning speaking. Hi, baby. You're good. I live in the UK for the last 17 years. Joe. I was, I'm not from village, unfortunately, she called, okay? Obviously, I like the UK. So I lived for my work purpose, Saudi Arabia, Germany, Falkland Islands. And I visited many countries, guys, uh, obviously, you know, starting from Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, Singapore, and then United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, and most of the European countries. Lami alaikum salam. You can see. Okay, if you see the home page, how you can join. And next to is the discover page. Discover page. Click on it. And you'll find, you see, types of clubs. Types of class. Level availability teachers. Go to the teacher section and click it. Now, if you write the teacher's name, like my name, for example, Rahat Ali. Now, you have found me. Eh? 
you click it oops that you can go to the teachers account or you can see the teachers who are offering free courses you can see uncle and danveer then teacher holly james british teacher donna vanessa ryan canadian teacher then uh, connie serena ahmed so similarly when you go to my account obviously will you'll be able to find me then you'll find the courses like spoken english with uh, rahat ali english grammar with rahat ali and i'll speaking you'll find three courses just click on it then you can enroll it will ask you would you like to join as a free student or a paid student so you choose whatever you like to do okay so this is the way how we can enroll to any course all right so thank you very much once again guys for joining it's early morning in the UK. Our local time is 8.45 a.m. Monday morning. It's a bank holiday in the UK. We call bank holiday what's the it's a government holiday. So that's why I'm at home. Otherwise, I could go to my work. If you remember, I came to this country to work permit to work for the government for the National Health Service in the in the pharmacy sector, in the health sector. And I'm working still. I've been working for them, you know. That's uh, I'm just happy about that uh, once again Yusuf and all the lovely people I'm from England I was not born here as I said okay so <clears throat> uh, uh, we can start with complex sentence do you know what are complex sentence before that I like to ask you do you know what is IELTS exam and why do you need to sit for the IELTS exam these are the basic questions, guys. If you know what are what is IELTS exam and why do you need to sit for the IELTS exam, then it will be easier for you to move ahead. Can anyone answer, guys? Hello, Pfizer. Welcome. Let me welcome. Stranger says language test. Yes, for what? Does everyone need to sit for the test? No, they don't. Hello, Dr. Patel, for the UK visa. It's not only for the UK visa, any English speaking countries. <coughs> for writing. Mm -hmm. Hello, Atil Krishna, welcome. Lamia, welcome again. And once again, guys, if you see the hardship symbol, just touch it once to support me. Uh, your every support is important for me. And as again, your every comment is important too. Uh, Shai Kul has written, IELTS International English Language Testing System will testify the efficiency of language. Uh, it is not testify, it will evaluate, basically. Okay. For going abroad or study public. Yes, that's right. So if you are considering to study in any speaking countries like the USA, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and the UK, as well as some European countries, or if you're considering to migrate there, you need to sit for the IELTS exam. So as Shaikul has written, International English Language Testing System, it has been offered from the UK and Australia IDP, UK British Council and Cambridge English Learning Centre, uh, more than 98 countries around the world. And it is offered every month just once. So there are two types of IELTS exam, IELTS Academic, IELTS General, from the name you can understand academic is mostly for the academic purpose, like studying in undergraduate, graduate, postgraduate, research, training. Okay. And for the general is mostly for migration, for your work permit. 
the basic difference of these two tests are um, reading and writing. Speaking and listening are same. And I also have got four sections as in you know, listening, reading, writing, and speaking. So listening is same for the both test. And speaking is same for the both test. They are different only in the writing sections and uh, reading sections. All right, so this one says it's a British English evaluation test. That's right, it's a kind of. Hello, Ray, you're welcome. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Before USMLE, we need to clear. Uh, yeah, IELTS is accepted in most of the countries. You know, you're doing it IELTS for a study purpose. Perhaps it will also develop. That's right. Hello, Nima. Welcome. Nima said, I'm new here. How can I start my study? What kind of study, Nima? You need to be specific. Hey, Arin. Happy to see you, Yusuf. So every time when I make live stream, I always give suggestions. I don't want to give you advice because you guys are always uh, ladies are as well, intelligent and talented. You need motivation rather than advice. You guys know that, and ladies know that you need to study well. You know, it's better to motivate yourself to study and reach your you know, goal. So as I was saying. For this purpose, in IELTS, there is a writing section. In writing section, in academic section, we have to do task one and task two. And general section, same, task one and task two. So what do you know from the writing section? I'm going to share something from you guys, OK? Writing techniques. Uh, so can you see the screen, guys, IELTS? academic academic writing hello crash welcome you can see it okay rajas good afternoon okay so you can see ielts academic writing so in academic writing there is task one task one and task two and general similar again task one and task two so what do you know about task one uh, I think Shaikal, can you please explain because you are sitting for the IELTS exam very soon. What are the topics of task one? What do we have to do in both tasks, guys? So basically, both of the tasks has some requirements. Task one, 20 minutes. You'll get 20 minutes write at least 150 words task to 40 minutes you have to write at least 250 words hey alexa welcome it's my pleasure to see you once again here Okay, guys, there, uh, by the way, dear viewers, this live stream has been shared in my Facebook live as well as my YouTube live. So there are some people watching from them. They've got a question. I'm going to answer one question from Bijoy. Welcome. And Ashish, welcome. Bijoy, you're my subscriber. So if you can come to Hello and you may join from there if you want to. Okay, task one, uh, Shekel says, a bar pie pie chart not pie 
line chart table will be given i have to write it with at least right exactly 20 minutes you have to write you know uh, at least 150 words yes Yusuf, these are needed for ielts writing we are i'm giving the tips and the information about ielts writing Vijay, send me a hop on request okay if you're here so timing is a factor look at the uh you know criteria you'll be given 20 minutes and you have to write 150 words my question is have you ever checked your writing speed like how many words you can write in one minute if you haven't checked it before i'll suggest you today you take a timer or watch start writing and check after one minute how many words you can write maybe after two minutes or after five minutes then you'll be able to count yourself Hi, Krunal, welcome. You'll, you'll join later. I'll be joining later. Krunal, it should be. I'll be joining you later or I'll join you later, simply. Tony, welcome. Better to check it because time management is much important and factor if you're sitting for IELTS exam or any other exam. So in academic writing, so academic writing task one is you'll be given a pie chart, bar chart, or a table or a graph okay uh, let us go academic first guys academic task one uh -oh, sorry so a pie chart table bar chart chart or graph etc uh, yes blueberry we're going to discuss both of them I'm going to give the brief, you know, explanation. What is task one and task two? Okay, I'll be joining you later. That's great, Colonel. It's better. Hi, Prashant. Welcome. So, what happens? Twenty minutes, hundred and fifty words. So, how many words in one minute, guys? Divide hundred fifty words by twenty. In one minute, you have to write at least seven words eight words so you have to have good writing practice number one and what are you going to write this is the biggest challenging question for every writing whether it's a task one or task two whether it is as academic or general remember that you must write three things always we call introduction body conclusions okay hello read and welcome I don't know where are you now you can tell me where are you now are you from your home or work or are you from your country or are you from some other country so for IELTS academic or general task one task two whatever it is you need to always you know fulfill and write these three things introduction body and conclusion okay so what is an interaction tell me guys uh, i have to show you something in the meantime for the academic purpose you know ielts academic task one so that you'll be able to understand
Okay, I'm going to share you a bar chart, guys. Okay, Trang, welcome. You can join my live stream only if you subscribe to my course because I'm a teacher here. That's the answer of your questions. So remember, in IELTS academic uh, writing task one always deals with either a table or a bar chart or a graph or a pie chart or any other photograph where you'll find at least two different kinds of data, okay? From which you have to construct a passage or a writing uh, comprehension, at least 150 words. Remember that it is very much important to have a look before you start writing, as you have to write introduction, body, and conclusion. Okay? Suraya, welcome. Lamia, welcome again. Raj says, comparing the two of the three years data, we have to compare two countries. It, it is not only country, Raj, it could be anything. Trang, you're already in the chat, you see? So let me show you on graph so that you can understand. Can you see it, guys? Hello, Mahfuz, welcome again. Look, it says write at least 150 words in 20 minutes. They should have mentioned it. Uh, female school leavers going to into higher education. Look, uh, blue color is 1980 and the orange color is 2015. In the UK, US, Australia, South Korea, France, so guys, tell me what would be the introduction, how you're going to start writing for this you know, uh, academic task one. Write your answer on the comment section. I'm going to read it. I'm going to suggest if something is needed. Remember that each and every student's writing style is different. So their wording must be different and their grammatical structure would be different, obviously. It is an important matter for you when you're writing this type of writing and academic. Remember guys, some beautiful, few basic techniques. Number one, follow the UK spelling technique or the American spelling technique. Do not mix it up. So what is an UK spelling technique? UK spelling technique, you see, was having O-U-R. For example, Kala, UK. Kala without you, US. So once you have started writing, do not mix it up. UK spelling with US spelling, you're not going to get good marks. Number two, sentences must be grammatically correct. Number three, spelling must be correct. So what are the information you're going to write? We call it coherence. Do you know what is the meaning of coherence? You're going to write only about the topic, step by step, it is called coherent. Number two, grammatical structure. When you're writing sentences, obviously you need to use different kinds of grammatical structure. Number three, vocabulary, which is very much important. Okay, so do not write any word that doesn't suit in the sentence, that doesn't make any sense. Number four, follow the introduction, body and conclusion and follow the transition method, okay? These are the most important things. And timing is a factor, as I say, you'll get 20 minutes and you have to write 150 words, which means in every one minute, you have to write at least eight words. Very often, our students ask us, you know, do you, do you need to write more than 150 words? Can we write more than 150 words? Yes, at least 10 persons access words are allowed. So. 10% and 150 is 15 words, so 165 words. But do not write less than 150 words. If you write less than 150 words, you're not going to get good mark. Once again, IELTS has marking system from one to nine. There is no pass or fail. And this exam only evaluates and assesses your quality of English and whether it fulfills the criteria where you're applying, whether as a student or as an immigrant. All right, guys, so look at this chart. I'm just giving an, uh, just a brief idea. 
so in the interaction you have to rephrase or paraphrase okay so rephrase and paraphrase hang on a moment if i can copy it then i think it will be easier for you to write in one yes i've copied it look you have to write introduction you have to rephrase it rephrase paraphrase okay or restatement okay guys if you have any questions and comments please do please do ask me On second, guys, as you know, my lessons are always open for the public. It is better for you to just make comments, okay? And ask me. Good afternoon, Vicky. Okay, can you see it now, guys? Okay. Mm hmm hello shahabuddin welcome so i'll you know task one say you have been given this chart to develop a writing in 150 verse so in the interaction section at least you have to write two sentences if possible write three okay can you introduce it briefly? Yes, Prashant, you need to introduce it briefly, what you're going to discuss, which is why we call it introduction, rephrase it, paraphrase it, or restatement, or explain, what is it? Explain, describe. So when you're writing, make sure you follow number one, accurate grammar. Number two, spelling, correct spelling. Number three, punctuation. Number four, lexical resource we call that is vocabulary idioms phrases number five wide range grammar structure meaningful logical sensible sentences um actually there's something i missed i think coherence So it should be two, guys. One point one. Okay. So Prashant, if you would like to introduce these whole things, but before that, look at these things: Co coherence, accurate grammar, correct spelling, punctuation, lexical resource, vocabulary, idioms, phrases, etc. Wide range of grammar structure, meaningful, logical, sensible sentences so this is your task for example task one for instance task one so what are you going to write guys when you see this you know a bar chart 
So it is a female school leavers in, let's look at the countries name, five countries, UK, USA, Australia, South Korea, France. And also there is percentage, zero percent to 60%. Uh, Prashant, lexical resource means when you're trying to give uh, your example, you need to know the correct vocabulary, words. Number one, maybe phrases or idioms or any other expressions that are acceptable in writing. Remember that in writing, there is formal word and informal word. We need to be careful because sometimes people write it without knowing what are formal words and what are informal words. If you write formal words, you'll get more marks the person who writes informal words. Let me give you an example. What is a formal word and what is an informal word? I'm sure, guys, very often you, you say, what's up? What's up is an informal word. Okay? Then you use guana, wana, hapta, lotta. Do not use it in your writing. You're not going to get good marks because these are informal words and those are not acceptable in writing. Okay? Another great example of formal word is see buy and purchase. So buy is informal, purchase is formal. Like you say a lot of yeah? informal, many formal. There are thousands of examples like this. All right, so it is an important for you be as an IELTS candidate to know and the difference how it can have impact on your score. When you're writing informal word, that's fine, but you're not get going to you're not going to get good marks. Remember that speaking in English or spoken English or conversational English is totally different than the written English or writing English. Okay, so you need to be careful. Now, if I go back to the task again, you can say like this in the introduction, briefly describe it. So the uh, another um, important matter is that when you write in academic writing, we use third person or passive voice, okay? If you remember passive voice. Or in third person or in third person. So do not write, I am going to describe in writing, no, this is not acceptable. Rather write, uh, this topic we'll discuss or it will be discussed in passive form, okay, or explain or depicted, uh, depicted, sorry, not depicted, 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 narrated. Uh, Prashant, you got it, that's okay. Remember, when you're starting this first sentence, don't write links. I'm going to describe. Do not use the first person. Always use the third person or the passive voice. Use passive voice. Yeah? No first person. No first person's descriptions. Okay. Let's 
So welcome everyone here once again and thanks for the support. <clears throat> uh, hello Ogavek, welcome. We should write in a formal manner. Yes. Hi Asra, welcome. So when you see this paragraph, I mean when you see this bar chart, you'll write like this. This in a graph will explain or depict or narrate or describe or it will be discussed. Then you go on. The female school leavers going into higher education for UK, for the UK, it should be more uh, correctly, for the UK, US, Australia, South Korea, and France. And second sentence you can write in percentage wise, okay? And two different, you can see the 1980 and 2015. So when you write a sentence, make sure it is meaningful, correct, and it makes sensible meaning, okay? It, it makes you uh, enough logic to understand. The, we have to understand the main uh, reason for learning a language is that communication needs to be understood from both of the sides. Whether you're a speaker or whether it's a writer, you can write, you write hundreds of emails if you're working in an office. Some people do that. Uh, you write lots of you know, proposal, project proposal, job proposal, assignments when you're a student. You write thesis paper if you're a research student. If you're a student, you do lots of presentation. You know, you make uh, your other uh, exams. You have to sit for it, you know, and you have to pass it. So these are the some ways that are helpful for both of the places, academic or non-academic as well, professional life as well. Hello, Aziz Beg, welcome, okay? It is an important in that case to know how it should go and how it should be, okay? Um, move on. So first topic is introduction, just then you introduce it. Now you bring your ideas in the body part. You remember that? Second part is body part. So what are you going to write in body part? You're going to write, okay, this graph is clear enough to understand and compare the, you know, school leavers in the UK, USA, blah, 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 go on, keep on writing. Make at least two to three points when you're describing in task one, in academic task one. Uh, in conclusion part, when you're going to the conclusion, but remember that, uh, Many you know, uh, teachers say that you can't add anything on a conclusion part in task one of academic. But in my understanding, disclaimer, this is my opinion. You can always have the opinion. Like uh, if the, you can say like this, if the ratio grows like this for the next 10 years, possibly the trend might be changing. We don't know if it's going up or down. If you're not sure, you can say simply trend is changing. Hang on a moment, please. I've got your phone call. Hello. Hello. Yes. Sorry guys, I got a call. Okay, so in the conclusion part, as we're saying, try to write whatever you feel like, but remember, do not write in the 
first person, or let's write in the third person. Okay. So let's move on. So that's the task one. And task two, uh, if there is an IELTS candidate, what kind of uh, task we're going to write in task two, both in IELTS academic and general? Does anyone have any idea? You can share with us. Okay, guys, um, I'm just going to uh, explain what are the topics of task two in IELTS exam. Hey, Roshni, welcome. Yes, Roshni, we're going to describe it in a moment. We're finishing uh, academic, then after that, we're going to go to general, okay? Stay with us. So I'm going to show you the task two uh, in a moment, the writing topics. In task two, writing topics could be we call it qualitative, qualitative, okay, or descriptive, descriptive, argumentative, opinionate, or forecast. or discussion there is no hard and fast rule guys it could be anything hey Ida good morning happy to see you how are you doing sweet sister Ida Uh, there are a few more guys I'm going to share with you. Uh, we have written opinion, discussion, advantage, these are direct questions, yes. I'm doing great, Ida, how about you? So in task two, both general and academic, um, we always write this type of topics, we find most of the times. 
qualitative, descriptive, argumentative, opinionated, forecast, discussion, advantage, disadvantage, direct questions, solutions. So again, remember when you're describing this type of writing, you have got 40 minutes and you have to write 250 words. So how many uh, words you have to write in one minute? So in that case, in four minutes, you have to write at least 25 words. So that is more than six words. Write seven words in one minute. Okay, guys. So remember that it is an important matter for you to write at least 250 words in 40 minutes. Very often students say that, is it true that teacher counts the word? Yes, it is true. They will count the words first before they start giving the mark, okay? So do not write less than 250 words in 40 minutes. So task two, 40 minutes once again, 250 words minimum. So again, you write interaction, body, conclusion, so in body bring at least three ideas, conclusion is your saying, yeah? All right. So welcome everybody here and thanks for the support. Uh, uh, I don't see any comments anymore, what's happening? Okay, very often students also ask, what are the common topics we write? These are the most 10 common topics that is found in IELTS exam. I'm writing it for you guys again, eh? like health, environment, education, development, globalization, public transport, criminal justice, youth crime. Okay. Uh, Vikas, welcome. Should you need to use advanced vocabulary? Advanced, it should be not advanced, yeah? Remember, advanced. Rahim, it should be advanced, okay?
Okay, Roshni, welcome back. Hey, Utman, welcome. Happy to see you. Uh, Roshni, how to write introduction? Uh, I'm going to give you an example in a moment. So, once again, in IELTS academic task 40 minutes, 250 words. So, that means in one minute, you have to write at least seven words. Okay. And these are the uh, topics you get during the exam time. Qualitative, descriptive, argumentative, opinionate, opinionated, forecast, discussion, advantage, disadvantage, direct questions, solutions, etc. And these are the topics that are uh, asked during the exam time, health related, environment, education, development, globalization, public transport, criminal justice, youth crime, etc. I should write here. Yeah? And you write introduction. So what do you write in the introduction? I've already explained to you earlier. Remember that. What do you write in introduction? Rephrase, paraphrase, restatement, explain and describe. And remember what we are going to write. Coherence, accurate grammar, correct spelling, punctuation, lexical resource vocabulary and idioms phrases wide range of grammar structure meaningful logical and sensible sentences okay and also we do not forget to use the formal words formal expression rather than informal words hello may welcome hello mosin you're already practicing here. If you have any question, Mosin, you can ask me. What document list? I, I, I didn't get you. What do you mean by what document list? Because. By the way, guys, the YouTube channel is my channel, which I've tagged. If you uh, please, if you'd like to help me, support it by subscribing to me, OK? The document which I'm writing. Oh, I see. Okay, I'm going to show you from the top. IELTS writing. Writing tips. Okay. So, academic writing, two tasks, task one, task two. General writing, task one, task two, both. Task one for both of them, 20 minutes, 150 words. Task two, 40 minutes, 250 words. We are discussing at the moment academic writing, guys. So after that, we're going to discuss general writing. So task one, once again, pie chart, table, bar chart, graph. And what are you going to write in both of the cases? Interaction, body, conclusion. <laughs> then I've given an example for task one. So you rephrase it or paraphrase, restatement, or explain or describe. And what we are going to write, remember, coherence, Accurate grammar, correct spelling. Punctuation, lexical resource, idioms, phrases, uh, wide range of grammar structure, meaningful, logical, sensible sentences, and obviously formal words. Use formal words. Words or expressions. Do you know that a lot of is informal word? Many is the formal word. Many or much. Yeah, you can say much as well if it is uncountable known. Hi, Lamia, welcome. Can you please tell me all idioms are formal? No. All idi idioms are informal, most of the cases. Remember that we use idioms only during a conversation, not in the written part. We don't say under the weather in a written section. You can say I'm under the weather, which is an idiom in speaking. <laughs> it's not allowed in your writing. Okay, remember that idioms are not formal. Those are informal expressions. 
and students do not know that that's why they don't get good marks you know that is the most you know part okay hey natifa welcome shaki welcome Kartik said the bar graph gives the information about the person the female school leavers appeared in higher education in the country so uk is very good well done Kartik. Mohammed was welcome that's very cool well done i should say hi what is the name natifa is it natifa natifa and waji welcome everyone that's great that's really cool Karthik you have done a very good job you see when a student writes the first sentence interaction a teacher can assess how much mark he's going to get or she's going to get okay Rama uh, as I said Gokhan welcome Gokhan has a question can you explain law and behold me okay there is a google word document na what is na it will be better if you share so that i can practice with the points in future i don't share google words here unfortunately i'm just giving some examples you can anyone can find the google Earth by yourself okay uh go khan law is a 17th century words for see or look at and behold same meaning that is poetic word behold you know William Shakespeare and many other you know writers have used these words. Those are mostly poetic, and law is a Middle Eastern you know, English. We don't use it anymore. We say simply see it, look at it. Okay, so <clears throat> always use passive voice when you're describing. Do not use active voice or first person. So we use, uh, do not use, I'm going to describe. This topic will discuss, it will be discussed, explained, depicted, narrated, etc. Whichever is suitable. All right. Hello, Mujibur Rahman. Walaikum Salam. It will be difficult for me to zoom, guys. Someone has to zoom it. No. Okay. So, task two, once again, to 40 minutes, 250 words, qualitative. The you know, writing topics are generally qualitative, descriptive, argumentative, opinionated, forecast, discussion, advantage, disadvantage, direct question, solutions etc and these are the general topics you know like health related environment education development globalization public transport criminal justice youth crime so once again when you're writing task two similarly introduction body conclusion so write the introduction now at least two to three sentences uh, let me give an example uh, honestly it will be better for you for your understanding you know I'll start two. So there would be language, trouble, society, sport, work, food, family. So it could be family, food, sport, trouble, you know, um, economics, 
art. So these are common topics. Though there is no hard and fast rule, no fixed you know, rule here, but these are the common. Yeah? Goka, no problem. Hello, Nurula, welcome. Okay, so go to the introduction once again. Uh, let me find out a topic for you guys so that it will be easier for you. Um, so how the marks are given once again? Very often our students ask this. Uh, let me find out. Yeah, marking system. So in writing section, how the markings are given? I should have discussed it here, guys. Marks distribution. Task response. Twenty five person. Okay. Coherence and cohesion, 25 person. Oops, 25 person. Vocabulary. Twenty five person. Hi, Sister Hannah. Walaikum salam. So, when you're writing in IELTS, you know, um, both academic and general, these are the marks distribution. You'd get 25 marks for task response. So what is a task response? Task response, you have to describe about the topic, the introduction part. Then, coherent and cohesion is only talking about the topics and step by step. You get another 25%. If you use good standard vocabulary, you get 25%. <clears throat> Remember, the vocabulary here means the formal words, not the idioms. We don't write idioms in our writing. We use idioms during our speaking, but not in our writing. <clears throat> Excuse me. OK. Then another 25% grammar. So you need to write different kind of grammar structure, correct grammar, correct expression. That is important, guys. If you have any question or comments, guys, please write in the comment section. <coughs> Sorry.
okay <clears throat> as i go through so for all the tasks once again introduction body conclusion i'm repeating twice so that it is clear to you so coherence accurate grammar as i explained earlier lexical resource what range of grammar structure meaningful logical sentence punctuation use words expressions formal words expression use passive voice or third person no first person description it's allowed task two similarly most common tasks again introduction body conclusions now IELTS general writing task one again 20 minutes 150 words task two 40 minutes 250 words so in general writing what are the task one topics guys does anyone know I'm going to give you an example, guys. Okay. Task one. It could be a letter or application or email, etc. So one sample I've just got here. You're planning to go and study English at a school overseas. Say and sample. Let me buy, make it a bit bigger. Hello, Wendy. Welcome, Salam. Hello, Andrew. Welcome. Hello, Lyle. Welcome. Thank you very much for joining. Can you see the screen, guys? Hello, Tozamel. So, we're discussing now IELTS writing task one of general tests. So in general test task one uh, always gives you to write either a letter or an application. And remember that how we can write a letter, how we can write an application. There are some rules, some techniques. We call it rubrics. okay you can see it all right that's great thank you very much so rubric is that when you're writing a letter like this one you're planning to go and study english at a school overseas you would like some information about the courses so write a letter to the school in your letter you must ask about the school say what kind of accommodation you want mention any special request you have like your diet for example why diet is important because some people are vegetarian they don't like to take anything else some people are muslim they always look for halal food some uh, you know jews uh, always look for kosher you know so there is this food for them they like i think kosher it is called possibly and there may be some other requirements we don't know 
so it's better to mention in your writing so, all right so remember once again when you're un writing a letter you should always uh, you know address address or address hmm address it is known address so how you're going to start it you guys can you give us an idea when you're writing a letter Guys, can you please see and can you please uh, tell me how we are going to ri start writing this letter? Because we don't know whom we have to write. Always write like this. Dear sir, it could be madam as well. Or madam. Oh, there is no E in madam. And always introduce yourself first because you are the student. Like you say, my name is Rahad Ali, for example. So I'm giving my example, guys, okay? So you like you start writing like this. My name is Rahat Ali, and recently, comma recently, I have registered to tell the course like advanced computer programming. For example, computer. in your school okay computer game computer programming in in your school mention the time starting from from january say 2022 it should be advanced here yeah? what advances Can you guys follow me how I'm writing? You can write a similar pattern. Like my name is this and recently I have registered for the course you have to mention and the session when you're going to start so that they know it, it's you. And also in next line you have to mention because I'm coming from the USA I'm, or you can write, I'm writing to you to try to decide whether a accommodation with a family or the uh, campus is needed okay well let's make sure you express your thoughts and i'd like to stay you can say with the host family where i'd like to share with other students in dormitory americans say dormitory but we say it, uh, hostel here 
in the UK. Okay, I would like to stay with very close to the collis so that etc. etc. write something like this in the body. Then in the last part, I really I would really appreciate if you could send me information. Also, let them know your uh, dietary recommend. Like you can say, oh, because I'm vegan, I'll prefer this day and that. And also your cost, the cost where you're going to stay. So make sure you mention, uh oh, where is it? You mention how you want to live. Like alone, share, shared, or with host family, or hostel, or dormitory. Hello, Trisha, welcome. Hello, Kajal, welcome. Once again, guys, do not forget to toss the heart shape symbol to support me. Okay, guys. Um, hello, Imam. Yes, from Bangladesh. Hello, Khalid. Welcome. Also, welcome to to welcome. So, when you're writing the letter for the accommodation, make sure you tell where you're coming from. where you are coming from yeah coming from how you want to leave your location okay oh, let's write accommodation cost your food requirement if you have food requirement All right. Then on the third paragraph, welcome everyone, guys. Uh, in the third paragraph of the letter, make sure you always write like this. I would appreciate if you could send me information. Okay. And remember. This is very much important when you're writing a formal letter. Write like this, I would appreciate. Then, thank you very much. Attention. Uh, or you can say sincere cooperation, 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 sincere cooperation. And obviously, this is a formal lot. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Now, remember 
we have started this word dear sir and madam okay if you start a letter dear sir and madam how we are going to finish what do you write do you write yours faithfully yours sincerely yours truly what is the correct form guys is it yours truly or you or sincerely or faithfully or we can write the other way truly yours sincerely yours faithfully yours etc okay yeah yes, says you have to write your sincerely okay i'm going to explain when we write your sincerely when we write yours faithfully when we write yours truly so yours sincerely sincerely yours they're same meaning but different expressions uh yours faithfully or faithfully yours they're same but different expressions similarly yours truly truly yours uh, you have to remember if your letter starts with dear sir and madam uh, listen carefully listen to me carefully if i yeah if because this letter has started dear sir madam so we cannot use yours, yours sincerely you can use either yours truly or yours faithfully okay that is the rule we write yours sincerely when we know the na name when we know the person like if you like, like dear Eva, for example, we well, you know you, yeah? Dear Eva, I don't know whether you're a boy or girl. If you are a boy, you can write Mr. If you're a girl, you can write Miss or Mrs., yeah? If you start the letter by name, you must write it sincerely. or sincerely yours if you write with dear sir or madam in that case yours faithfully faithfully yours or yours truly truly yours when you know the name once again when you know the name we use yours sincerely or sincerely yours. when we don't know the name we start dear sir dear madam or dear advertiser dear promoter dear controller we don't know the name at all in that case always use yours faithfully or faithfully yours okay yours truly or truly yours so this is one sample example so remember guys timing is a factor you'll get 20 minutes and 150 words so you have to write as fast as possible but remember you must write at least seven words in one minute in task one otherwise it will not be possible for you to complete you know 150 words what is waste checkout absent martin welcome i didn't get you i'm sorry martin okay so this is the rule now if you do not know the name once again like dear sir we finish yours faithfully yeah? yours truly okay mm. 
no problem if if you have if you have got it that's the important matter hello briar welcome so once again guys welcome to my live stream ever isles writing tips it's monday morning here in the uk our local time is four past ten a.m because it's a bank holiday which is why i'm at home all right guys should i end the letter with my name yes yes so then you have to write your name obviously then you write your name so yeah, it was me sarah Hadali. okay once again i'm showing you the layout of the the topic is you're planning to go and study english at a school overseas You'd like some information about the courses, write a letter to the school, your letter, ask about the school, say what kind of accommodation you want, mention the specialist. So you start like, yes, sir, madam, if you don't know the name. If you know the name, ad address. Address with the name. Address with the name. Sorry, it's a verb. Address with the name. Address is noun. Address is verb. Remember, it is very confusing sometimes. So address, higher to lower intonation. Noun, lower to higher intonation is about address. Always address with the name. If you know, would like to address with the name, address it if you know the name. But if you don't know the name, address like dear sir or madam. Okay, at your school, not in your school. Programming, it should be at your school. You see, preposition is important to get good marks. Starting from January, mention your name. What course have you registered? When, where are you coming from? Your location. You can say, I'm coming from, say, I'm coming from UK. I'm, I'm coming from the UK. UK to study in Australia, for example. So then you write how you want to live there. Does this uh, school has any hostel? or dormitory, or can you share the room with someone else or a host family? You can always ask if they can arrange your accommodation. All right, Ahad, welcome, thank you very much. Is there any difference with advantage between online and offline IELTS test? There is no offline IELTS test. If uh, I don't know from where have you heard this? Hold the IELTS test online. There is no online test either. You know, to sit for the test, you need to attend the exam. Okay, it is not like education. It's like a test, and you have to be present physically on the day, in the test center. So you can ask the accommodation costs, food requirements, whatever you have, then. In the third paragraph, I would appreciate if you please let me know the cause. And the last, thank you very much for your attention and sincere cooperation. I look forward to hearing you, you soon. Then, yours truly, sincerely, faithfully, depending on how you start the letter. Okay, if there is no name, we write generally yours truly, yours faithfully, or truly yours or faithfully yours. If there is name, we write sincerely yours or yours sincerely. Then you write your name at last. Okay? That is all about. You have joined me and you don't know my name. That's really amazing, Ahad. Look at my comments. You go back and have a look, please, Ahad. Okay, guys, that is uh, task one, and task two is similar in IELTS academic task two and general task two. So there might be different kinds of topics, as you see. Okay, as I, 
explained earlier, so it will be the same, you know, um, when you're writing task two. So task two, in this case is same, it could be qualitative, descriptive, argumentative, opinionated, forecast, discussion, advantage, disadvantage, direct question, solution. And this task two could be from any topic like health, environment, family, food, sport, travel, economics, art, education, development, globalization, public transport, criminal justice, youth crime, etc. Okay. We have heard from the center here. No. We, there is no offline and online test for IELTS exam. If uh, you have to attend physically to the test center to sit for the exam. Okay, and because there is no um, COVID in many countries, so uh, they have already started taking the exam again. And I, I don't know when and how it is possible, but you need to contact the local British Council or the people or the organization that offers you the IELTS exam. Hello, Maya, welcome. Hello, Chandan, welcome. Yeah, after a while. Uh, guys, I'll be back in one minute, okay? I have to use the loop quickly. So carry on watching. I'll play in the meantime something so that you can learn the podcast. Okay. I'll be back in a moment, guys. Hi, Anika, welcome. Yeah, welcome, Lamy, welcome. Carry on what, listening. I'll be back exactly in two to three minutes time. In the meantime, carry on listening to one of the podcasts from BBC. Hi, Neil from BBC Learning English here. Did you know that we are now offering a new weekly extra episode of Six Minute English exclusively on our website? So go to bbclearningenglish.com to find your favorite presenters on your favorite program. The extra episodes are only available on our website, bbclearningenglish.com. See you there. Six Minute English from bbclearningenglish.com. Hello, this is Six Minute English from BBC Learning English. I'm Neil. And I'm Sam. Are you feeling well, Sam? No headache or sore throat? <laughs> no, I feel fine. Thanks, Neil. Why do you ask? Well, I've been reading some inspirational stories about the doctors and nurses fighting COVID. When I was a boy, I always dreamed of becoming a doctor. Ah, I see. Have you ever been in hospital? Mm, yes, I have. And I remember the nurse's bedside manner, you know, the kind and caring way that doctors and nurses treat people who are ill. Nowadays, more and more of the jobs that humans do are being carried out by machines. But I doubt that a doctor's bedside manner could easily be replaced by a robot. In this program, we'll be discussing whether the revolution in artificial intelligence, often shortened to AI, could replace human doctors and nurses. We'll be asking, can you imagine a future without doctors? In fact, machines are already doing some of the jobs traditionally done by doctors, scanning people's bodies to detect skin cancer, for example. Yes, that's true, Sam. And it links to my quiz question, which is about human skin. It's a well-known fact that skin is the human body's largest organ. But how much skin does the average adult have? Is it A, two square meters, B, three square meters, or C, four square meters? Of course, our skin gets loose as we age, but I can't believe there's three square meters of it. 
I'll say the answer is A, two square metres. OK, we'll find out if that's correct later. Every year in the UK, over 5 million people are treated for skin cancer. Catch it early and your chances of survival are increased. Usually a skin specialist or dermatologist will examine your skin using a handheld microscope. But in 2017, a team of researchers at Stanford Medical School made an exciting announcement. Here's Oxford University researcher Daniel Suskind telling BBC World Service programme The Big Idea what the medics at Stanford had invented. A team of researchers at Stanford last year announced the development of a system that if you give it a photo of a freckle, it can tell you as accurately as 21 leading dermatologists whether or not that freckle is cancerous. The Stanford medical team had invented an AI system to analyse freckles, small brown spots found on people's skin, especially on pale skin. As it turned out, the AI programme was better than doctors at telling whether a freckle was harmless or cancerous, connected to some type of cancer. So it seems that artificial intelligence is already replacing humans when it comes to detecting cancer and doing a better job of it. But Daniel Suskind isn't convinced. One reason is that AI systems still need humans to program them. And as it turns out, knowing exactly how doctors detect illness remains something of a mystery. Here's Daniel Suskind again in conversation with BBC World Service programme, The Big Idea. If you ask a doctor how it is they make a diagnosis, they might be able to point you to particularly revealing parts of a reference book or give you a few rules of thumb, but ultimately they'd struggle. They'd say, again, it requires things like creativity and judgment, and these things are very difficult to articulate. And so traditionally, it's been thought very hard to automate. If a human being can't explain how they do these special things, where on earth do we begin in writing instructions for a machine to follow? Most doctors find it difficult to explain how they make a diagnosis. Their judgment about what someone's particular sickness is made by examining them. Diagnosing someone's illness is complicated, but there are some rules of thumb. A rule of thumb is a practical but approximate way of doing something. For example, when cooking, a good rule of thumb is two portions of water to one portion of rice. Exactly. And because identifying sickness is so difficult, Daniel says, where on earth do we begin writing instructions for a machine? We use phrases like where, how, or what on earth to show feelings like anger, surprise, or disbelief. I might show surprise by asking Sam, how on earth did you know the answer to that? Aha, I guess you're talking about your quiz question, Neil. And you needn't be so surprised, I'm naturally brainy. Of course you are. In my quiz question, I asked Sam how much skin there is on an adult human body. And I said it was A, two square metres. Which was the correct answer. With your brains, I think you'd make a good doctor, Sam, and I'm sure you'd have a good bedside manner too. Ah, you mean the kind and caring way that doctors and nurses treat their patients. OK, let's recap the rest of the vocabulary, starting with freckle, a small brown spot on someone's skin. Freckles are usually harmless, but some skin spots can be cancerous, connected to cancer. The doctor's diagnosis is their judgment about what someone's particular sickness or disease is. A rule of thumb is a useful but approximate way of doing or measuring something. And finally, we use phrases like where on earth as a way to show emotions like anger, surprise or disbelief. That's all for this programme, but join us for the next edition of Six Minute English when we'll discuss another trending topic and the related vocabulary. Why on earth would you miss it? Goodbye for now. Goodbye. Six Minute English from the BBC. Hello, viewers. I'm back. You have just listened to a BBC podcast about the Six Minutes English from the UK. And once again, you're watching the live broadcast from the United Kingdom and the local time is 19 past 10 a.m. Monday morning. It's bank holiday in the UK and I'm conducting the lessons from my home. 
Welcome, Lamia, Zohal, Windy, Aziz Beg, and Rama, and all the lovely people. I'm sure that you have listened to the podcast and have learned something new. Once again, we're almost end of the today's lesson uh, regarding the IELTS writing tips. Okay, if you have any questions and comments in the meantime, please do let me know. I'll be happy to answer it clearly. Remember that when we learn something new from any lesson, if there is any question or comments, and if you're confused about anything, you need to ask question. Okay, you need to make comments. Okay, we welcome. So, guys, once again, I'm going to give you the briefing. IELTS writing tips. So, there are two types of tips for academic and general, and both of the cases, task one and task two. Task one, 20 minutes, 150 words. Task two, 40 minutes, 250 words. And how the marks are distributed. Task response, 25 person, coherent and cohesion. 25 person, vocabulary, 25 person, grammar, 25 person. What does the vocabulary contain? It contains the words, advanced words, and some phrases which are acceptable or group words or collocations. And grammar contains the different kinds of wide structure, as well as all the you know, rules of grammar, correct spelling, correct punctuation, and correct expression of the words sensible logical understandable okay and in academic task one generally a pie chart table bar or chart or graph and you have to just write okay and you have to follow this technique introduction body and conclusion for task two is common so we are going to describe it later for general task one you have to write either a letter or an application remember that uh, you need to use formal words rather than informal words. Many of us are, do not know what is a formal word, what is an informal word. I've given two examples like buy is an informal word, purchase is formal. A lot of is informal, whereas many or much is formal. Okay. And now task two, again, 40 minutes, 250 words. So you have to write at least seven words in one minute and we always express with passive voice or third person we do not use first person okay like we don't say i'm going to describe rather this topic will describe or this topic will discuss or it will be discussed it will be explained it will be narrated it will be depicted etc and in task two these are the most common you know writing topics like qualitative descriptive argumentative, opinionated, focus, discussions, advantage, disadvantage, direct questions, solutions. All right, guys, so if you have any questions or comments, please do write me. I'll be happy to answer it because we're nearly at the end of this today's lesson, this morning's lesson. And hopefully, if I have time, I'll come back live stream later. Okay, guys, so let me see if there is any comments or questions, not. Okay, guys, so Chandan, have you set up an IELTS writing course teacher? Not yet, Chandan. Uh, that is my next course, okay? Um, so I've given an example. So if you want to know more, guys, I'll suggest you to watch this video once again when it's finished, going to my account from the A to Z from, okay, we're going to describe later complex sentence because Complex sentences and compound sentences are needed for IELTS good marking. So we're going to uh, describe it later. So thank you very much, guys, for once again joining me. Uh, yes, next live stream will do also IELTS. So follow me, support me, you'll get the notification. 
Thank you very much, everyone. You take care. Remember, practice is the key factor. Whatever you have learned today, write it, read it, okay, and practice it. I'll see you later, guys. You take care and bye.